Molecules are atoms combined together by chemical bonds. There are two primary types of chemical bonds that hold atoms together. Ionic bonds form when atoms completely gain or lose valence electrons to fill their outer shell. Molecules are atoms combined by forming chemical bonds. There are two primary types of chemical bonds that form molecules. In an ionic bond, atoms completely gain or lose electrons to become charged particles called ions. Ions of opposite charges are then attracted to each other to form an ionic bond. Or, valence electrons can be shared between two different atoms to form a covalent bond, as is the case with this methane molecule where one carbon atom and its one, two, three, four valence electrons are shared with the one valence electron of four individual hydrogen atoms. When we look more closely at the structure of molecules, we notice there are two major groups that arise, those that contain carbon or organic molecules and those that don't contain carbon like this water, which we call inorganic. As we look at organic versus inorganic molecules, we'll quickly notice that organic molecules are much larger and more complex. This stems from the chemical properties of carbon. Carbon has an atomic number of six, and thus six protons and six electrons. If we take a look at the distribution of its six electrons, we notice that there are one, two, three, four electrons in its valence shell. That means every carbon atom is able to easily form up to four covalent bonds. So it's rather easy to get one carbon covalently linked to another and another and another to form these long chains. Oftentimes associated with these chains we'll see hydrogen atoms. Sometimes they're referred to as hydrocarbon chains. If we look at some of the molecules that can be formed by these long carbon chains, we see they quickly get really large and complex, as is the case with this phospholipid, a typical component of every cell membrane in your body. Or this glucose molecule that you use for metabolism, or this nucleic acid that plays a role in inheritance, or this amino acid, amino acid one of the structural building blocks of your body. Now as we look closely at all these different organic molecules, we notice they're made of more than just carbon backbones, but there are other elements involved, and they seem to form particular structures. We call these other structures functional groups, and it's these functional groups that are going to give the different categories of organic molecules the chemical properties. For instance, Simply being able to dissolve in water is an important chemical property. In the pink bowl, we have some sucrose or table sugar in the water. In the teal bowl, we have some oil. It's easy to notice, and at least understand, that the sugar dissolves readily in water while the oil doesn't. If we take a look at the chemical structure of the sucrose versus the triglyceride in the oil, we quickly notice that they're rather different and it's these differences that give them their different chemical properties. Sucrose is hydrophilic or water loving and readily dissolves. Whereas the triglyceride, the oil, is hydrophobic, water hating, and does not dissolve easily. If we take a closer look at hydrophilic and hydrophobic molecules, we notice that they have different functional groups. Many of the functional groups that we notice on hydrophilic, water loving molecules like the hydroxyl groups on this glucose, disassociate when we put them in water. As the hydrogen disassociates from the oxygen, it leaves charged regions to the molecules, which a polar water molecule can then be attracted to, thus allowing the hydrophilic glucose to dissolve. However, there aren't any functional groups that lead to differences in charges in a triglyceride. As such, 
the triglyceride is going to be attracted to itself and not the water molecules when it's put in water. So it's the functional groups that are going to give the different types of organic molecules their properties. Before we continue, we should note that there are four different categories of organic molecules. Carbohydrates, which we generally associate uh, with food things like bread, starches, typically are made of these ring-like structures, one attached to another, to another, to another, to another, to another. Whereas lipids, which we associate with uh, oils and fats, generally speaking, are going to be these long hydrocarbon chains, often two or three associated together versus proteins, which we associate with milk, eggs, turkey, beans, have uh, several very different functional groups, which gives this category of organic molecules some very unique and interesting properties. And finally, nucleic acids are found in your body in much less quantities than carbohydrates, lipids, pro or, or proteins but they are the driver or the director for how the other organic molecules are going to be put together to make a cell or a cat or a fish or you. So depending on the functional groups, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids all have different properties which allow them to do what they do in living systems. All of these are organic molecules, which means they're carbon containing and relatively large and complex versus inorganic molecules which lack carbon and are often much, much smaller and much, much less complex than organic molecules are.